All right, this is a Fox News alert. Huge week for the president. So much breaking news. We have all the angles, new information covered tonight. First, we have long reported on this program, going back to 2007, yeah, journalism's dead. And also that the mainstream media mob is nothing more than an arm of the extreme, radical, new Socialist Democratic Party. They coordinate a political message. They deliver it together in concert with one another. Basically, they're like one, one and the same. They're an echo chamber. They repeat the same talking points. Uh, remember, oh, manufactured crisis. They use the same words. Tonight, we have more proof. A journalist who writes for the Huffington Post, New York Magazine, his name is Yashir Ali, took to Twitter earlier today to express his outrage. At NBC News, their politics managing editor, a woman by the name of Daphna Linzer. Now, according to Ali, she tried to intimidate him, not on behalf of NBC News, no, on behalf of the Democratic Party. Now, Ali wrote that, quote, Daphne's conduct during the call was highly inappropriate. It was unethical. She wanted the reporter to hold off on publishing the dates of an upcoming Democratic primary, not to help NBC, not so her network could do it first, but that so the DNC could inform state party leaders. Why is she advocating for them? As Ali put it, quote, she was calling to bully me into delaying the publication of an innocuous scoop, and at no point did she ever advocate for her network. It was only about the DNC. Dafta reminded Ali, quote, me, that she was a national security reporter at the Washington Post for 10 years, and they would hold stuff all the time. Hold it, you know, hold it. Anyway, how can Comcast, think about this, they're the powerful parent company of NBC News, um, allow this kind of corruption in its ranks, just like a whole news channel full of tinfoil hat conspiracy theories? I have an important question, very important question for everybody watching at home tonight. Are you at all shocked that NBC News is working on behalf of the DNC? How many times have I said since 07, journalism is dead and buried? Right now, their credibility, frankly, could never get any worse. After all, the two-plus years, breathlessly, breathlessly pushing the biggest hoax in American history. Now, fake news CNN and tinfoil hat conspiracy TV MSNBC, literally now shown to be liars. Who are they lying to? Their own viewers. And as I pointed out, every second, every minute, every hour of every 24-hour day, every week, month, year. And now their audience, well, they are leaving in droves. Look at this. The media bosses, bad people. The crooked journalists. The totally dishonest TV pundits. And by the way, they know it's not true. They just got great ratings. By the way, their ratings dropped through the floor last night. Did you see that? They had their audiences every single day, night, on the edge of their seat. It's coming. It's coming. Soon. Now. It's happening. It's going to happen. It's definitely happening. Then the Mueller report. Well, that ended all of that. And what you saw is the most dramatic, precipitous drop in audience with tinfoil hat conspiracy TV, MSNBC, fake news, CNN, hundreds of thousands of viewers. By the way, CNN not even making a million viewers, a historic decline. Now, the media, of course, they wanted this president to be guilty of treason. They wanted him to fail spectacularly. They still do. And that's why they are now demanding that the Mueller report be released in full and that the summary report from the Attorney General Barr is not to be trusted. But Barr announced he's going to release the whole thing anyway, so why would he lie when he knows he's releasing it and everyone's going to see it? Pretty bizarre. Watch this. We don't have the Mueller report. We need it. They're, they're covering up at this point. Jeff Sessions, who the one decent thing that he did was just recuse himself. Mm -hmm. um, this guy is not recused. It feels like the seeds of a cover-up. Barr then, I think, stepped out, intercepted it, put his own spin on it, and now he's sitting on it. They are hiding behind Donald Trump's own Roy Cohn. William Barr, yeah, I said it. Donald Trump's own Roy Cohn who squeezes together a couple of Simmons fragments and puts it in a letter 
while trying to keep from the American people the Mueller report. They forgot to tell you that they completely said no evidence of collusion, just like the FBI said, just like the House Intel said, just like a bipartisan Senate committee said. This is now the fourth time no evidence of collusion. But the media that hates Trump with rage, the mob, desperately want the full Mueller report released. But they never asked for the FISA applications and the Carter Page be released. A bulk of information is Hillary's bought and paid for a dossier. They never talk about that either. Real Russian interference in an election after they rigged an investigation into their favored candidate because they thought that she should win 100 million to zero and that we smelly Walmart voters that are irredeemable deplorables that cling to God, guns, Bibles, and religion, you know, we don't know what we're doing. Remember the gang of aid information, closed door testimony. That's all going to be coming out. It'll come cascading down on them, like the transcripts we recently got from Page, Strzok, uh, and, and Christopher Steele, and McCain's aide. They don't want a full and fair Clinton email investigation. They don't care if there's a dual system of justice, no equal justice under the law, no equal application of our laws. We don't care if they follow the Constitution. They don't want an investigation into this rampant abuse of power at the highest level of the DOJ and the FBI. None of the media, you know, just all they want is the Mueller report so that maybe they'll find a line and they'll cling to that, you know, like it's manna from heaven. Because Attorney General Barr and Rod Rosenstein pretty instantly agreed, no, no evidence of any obstruction for a crime that was never committed anyway. Um, I have a spoiler alert, as you could probably tell. New narrative is a lie, as pointed out last night right here on this program by Rush Limbaugh. Take a look. So we're being led to believe that this report does contain evidence of collusion. Barr's lying about it. Now, if this is so silly, if it contains evidence of collusion, then where is Mueller on television all night saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's not what my report says. My report has plenty of evidence of collusion. I had all these anti-Hillary people on my staff, and we found all kinds of evidence, and Barr is lying. Why isn't Mueller doing that if Barr is lying about what's in the report? Such a great point in breaking today. The Attorney General Barr, oh, like he said in his four-page letter, yeah, last week, he's going to release the Mueller report mid-April, if not sooner. And there are no plans to submit the report to the White House for a privilege review, which, by the way, I would think is a mistake. Uh, that's because, apparently, they know there's nothing to hide. And all the media lying, all the speculation, you know what, once again, dead wrong. And by the way, Barr always said he intended to release it. So why would he send out words that would be contradicted when he released it? You know, if it was that big a deal, what would the problem be? They would never stop. They would demand he be fired. Bad news for the media. Great news for the country. They never report about the success of the president, the records that he's broken. So without a doubt, a momentous week, not only for the president, but also for this country. Because you know what? We came dangerously close and are still dealing with a significant, serious abuse of power, attempted coup. But for now, and we got to keep vigilant, facts, common sense, logic have prevailed. That's why I keep saying we must get to the bottom of all of this and hold them accountable, and we will on this show. After facing more than two years of nonstop, constant tinfoil hat conspiracy theories, nonstop media lies, hysteria, and a, and a 20 plus month partisan witch hunt, the president's been vindicated, and that's killing them. Should be great for the country. The president didn't do it, but not for the media, not for the Democratic Party, because they're going to lose their power and they've lost their credibility. After three years of lies and smears and slander, the Russia hoax is finally dead. They're wrong so often, aren't they? Think about this. Cambridge Police, Ferguson, Baltimore. Uh, think about they wouldn't vet Obama. They wouldn't tell you Obama's failed record. Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman, rush to judgment, no due process, Duke Lacrosse, UVA. They're wrong all the time. And it's sad. Look at what they did to a 16-year-old kid, Nicholas Sandman. Look at how they wanted to believe Jesse Smollett so bad. 
a team of partisan Hillary Clinton loving Democrats found zero evidence of Trump Russia collusion. The fourth time now we've had that conclusion because there was no Trump Russia collusion. Never was, none, zero. And there is no denying the absolute fact that President Trump won the 2016 election fair and square because the American people wanted the disruptor to drain the swamp. And he's doing it, despite a concerted effort by a powerful few, which is really scary, that would abuse the powerful tools of intelligence to take him out. Kind of a soft coup in America. All right, the question is, how do we hold them accountable? Where do we go from here? The biggest abuse of power corruption scandal in American history, a witch hunt spurred by illicit election interference, not from Russia, but from the highest levels of our own government, not rank and file, coordinated by corrupt, unelected bureaucrats inside the Obama administration, which does make us wonder. Well, now that we learned last week that the attorney general of Obama, Loretta Lynch, you know, who met on the tarmac with Bill Clinton and said it's a matter, not an investigation, that they were, according to Page and Strzok, they were, the, the fix was in. They knew the fix was in because there was all Democrats working in the uh, attorney general's office. And what did Obama know? Now that it's in the attorney general's office, what did he know? When did he know it? because everybody must be held accountable. We cannot let this happen, as Donald Trump says, the president says, to any other president. According to Rush Limbaugh, the time to act is now. He's right. Take a look. The objective remains to get Donald Trump out of office, either by driving his numbers down or impeaching him or defeating him in 2020. They aren't through trying to get rid of Donald Trump. They're not through trying to overturn the election results of 2016. They're never going to finish trying to get rid of Trump. Even if he's elected in 2020, they're setting up the impeachment now with all of this stuff. It's never. That's why these people need to be politically defeated and pounded into the ground to the point of irrelevance. It, great point. To the point of irrelevancy. We don't hold them accountable. This will happen again and again, and we'll lose the country. It's that serious. There's got to be a constitutional republic. All laws are based on our Constitution. We must demand equal justice under the law. Equal ap application of our laws be restored. No constitutional republic can survive without it. For far too long, we have seen one set of standards for well-connected Democrats, and then there's the standard for the rest of us. Yeah, what would happen to you or me or anybody if we deleted 33,000 subpoenaed emails and cleaned out our hard drive with bleach bit and had an aide bust up our devices with hammers and pulled out the SIM cards? Look at Chicago. Jesse Smollett, he was given a free pass. That state attorney general, Kim Fox, declining to prosecute all charges dropped despite overwhelming evidence, including two witnesses that would testify that Smollett staged a disgusting hate crime hoax and video of them of buying the very things that were used in that incident. Mayor of Chicago, I'm no fan of Rom Deadfish Emanuel. He wants Smollett to repay the city of Chicago for the cost of the investigation. Well, there's possible federal charges, but Emanuel also wants you to know that it's not really Jesse Smollett's fault. No, President Trump, <laughs> if the dog bites, if the bee stings, if you're feeling sad, uh, of course, it's Trump's fault. Take a look. Look, I've always said from day one, this is a Trump-free zone, the city of Chicago, and I mean it. Let me be really clear about something. The only reason Jesse Smollett thought he could take advantage of a hoax about a hate crime is for the environment, the toxic environment that Donald Trump created. Yep, everything in the world is Trump's fault. If you have a hangover, it's probably Trump's fault. Literally, if President Trump adopted the Democrats' insane New Green Deal agenda, gave every American $5 million and cured cancer, they'd still hate him. And by the way, apparently, if Jesse Smollett hires two uh, people to dress up like Trump supporters and shout racist things at him while pre pretending to assault him, all President Trump. Now, meanwhile, what Smollett allegedly did here has real serious consequences. Now, we did send our own Lawrence Jones to Chicago to see what locals think about what has been called a whitewash of justice. Take a quick look. The verdicts came out on the Jesse Smollett case. They decided to drop the charges. How do you feel about this? Robbed. The answers are revealing. We have the full video coming up on this program. 
we will always fight for justice, due process, and the presumption of innocence, inalienable rights that made this the greatest country man has ever known, that God has ever created. Whether it's Jesse Smollett, his case Chicago, the deep state abuse of power in Washington and the swamp, we will demand accountability for those who stomp on the rights of others. At the end of the day, it's the future of our republic depends on life, liberty, equal justice for all.